Are you a parent who unintentionally wishes for the worst for their kid? <coughs> or are you a parent who consistently nags his child to get good grades, compete, compete, compete for worldly treasures until his child's spirit is invisibly sucked out of his body and his life is plain robotic and lamely mundane? Or are you a parent who constantly demands the best from their kid with respect to the Nyavi achievement so that you can just show off to your friends and family members while totally ignoring their religious upbringing? If yes, and you don't want to do anything about it, then um, please help yourself. But if not, then congratulations! This video is just for you! But wait, let me at least establish my credibility and practical parenting achievements before I begin. After all, you must know that I'm eligible to be making this video on parenting and deserve the honor of you taking at least a minimum of 60 seconds to sit down and watch this video without having that awkward grimace on your face trying to understand what I'm trying to say just because I might be saying it too fast. <laughs> okay, anyhow, I shall slow down now for the sake of your convenience. I am a proud parent of a two-year-old girl. I think that's too slow. Okay, let me try that again. Alhamdulillah, I'm a proud parent of a two-year-old girl whose upbringing has practically left me with like no hair on my head, a come-and-go sprained back from catering to Her Majesty all day long, and Alhamdulillah, a person with an unbelievably increased sixth sense of unconditional sabr. <laughs> that said, here are a few things that my husband and I did since we got married with an aim to serve the Imam Jalalahu Ta'ala Farajak of our time, which has alhamdulillah led to the following achievements on the part of my two-year-old daughter. You can now please pause the video and read her resume with Islamic achievements for yourself. No, seriously, please pause the video and do that, because, you know, like the intellectual Arabs say, Habibi, if you don't know where you're going, then how will you get to where? Oh wait, that cat say that? <coughs> Never mind, it's the same thing. If your child is already doing most of these things, then wow, mashallah, I would really love to know any tips that you may like to share so that we all could implement them on our children and, you know, do our little experimentations. <laughs> we all need to understand that Islam teaches us to take others along with us towards success rather than just sulk aimlessly in a competitive atmosphere trying to put others behind. Let us all learn from each other and move together towards the Imam and endeavor to be his supporters ourselves first and then our future generations. The following steps are what we did as parents and what worked for our daughter. Every parent and every child is different. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself or your kid as that would just like, you know, make things worse. Let's do whatever seems pertinent for our children and the usual boring stuff. So as a parent, the only one who knows the best for our children better than us is Allah, of course, and our 14 Masameens, alayhi salam. Not the chachis, or the mamus, or even the aunties next door. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> really, what would be better for the parents to select role models equivalent to the 14 Masameens for our children rather than the stupid Avengers or the Disney princesses or, you know, whatever, that are just blatant weapons of distraction of the Dajjal and the Illuminati? Why are we as parents serving this position to our kids right from their birth and then later on in their adulthood complaining that, oh my god, they don't listen to me, they don't do this, they don't do that. But dude, it was your fault that they don't do that at this time because you just didn't give them a proper upbringing. I know it's not the right thing to blame the parents, but as Imam Ali alayhi salam has said, that a child is like soft clay. He will take shape however you mold him. So, we did nothing when we had the opportunity to mold him, and that was in his childhood. So why are you actually complaining now, when it's too late? <coughs> Let's get to it. Part 1. After marriage. The first step you need to do after you get married is read from the Marriage to Parenthood Guidebook. If you haven't done so already, please go read it now. Yes, now. Oh wait, um... Okay, just get done with this video and then go. It's a short guide, almost like a long article, telling us everything we need from A to Z with respect to marriage. Just go through the table of contents and you'll know what I mean. It's like so informative and interesting that even someone who detests reading will read it to the end, making sure that no section is missed. 
The link is in the description box below. Please don't make me work like harder than that, okay? Part two. During pregnancy. <coughs> <coughs> this French accent is harder than I thought. <laughs> the next step is for you to read the Quran. That comes without saying, please. Read the Quran at least once during your pregnancy, both in the original Arabic text as well as in a language you can understand. For example, an English translation. Duh. After every time you're done reading, make sure that you blow on your stomach for your little one and also please try to read it out loudly so that um, your baby can hear your voice. <laughs> what? Oh, please. Research indicates that babies in the womb have been shown to respond to voices and noise and the most significant sound that a baby hears in the womb is the voice of the mother. Aww. That said, both the parents could endeavor to recite the Holy Quran together so that the baby hears the beautiful words of Allah from both mom and dad. What could be better than that? The next step is be good role models. Duh. Although easier said than done, endeavor to maintain pious conduct as a general way of life. For example, like listening to Islamic lectures, nahas, eating the barak of the imams, being careful of what we see or hear or speak in front of our children during pregnancy. You know, and this includes both the parents because, of course, the akhlaq of the parents is going to have an influence on the baby to be born, inshallah. As per the famous book, Rihani al-Bahashti, the mentality of the mother and those around her during pregnancy have a strong impact on the development of the baby in the womb. The parents must try to engage in Islamic activities as much as possible. Ding, 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 ding. Case study time! Yasmin is currently in her third trimester of pregnancy. She and her spouse Malik have been spending an hour together every evening listening to Al-Ghina, haram music throughout her pregnancy rather than taking time out to read the Holy Quran. They, however, expect their child to be a supporter of the Imam one day. Will Yasmin and Malik be successful in their aim to raise a pious child if they themselves do not mend their ways? Let's leave that as a rhetorical question. Step four, talk to your baby. <laughs> what? Hadith tells us that when Bibi Khadija Salamullah Haleh was pregnant with Bibi Fatma bin Zahra, Rasulullah noticed that she used to speak with her often. The mother should therefore speak to the Imam of our time, Ajallahu Ta'ala Frajak, in solidarity while she's pregnant, while keeping her hand on her stomach like she's trying to teach her baby something, you know? Ah. From personal experience, when I used to do that while I was pregnant, this was like the most peaceful experience for me. It strengthened my bonding with the Imam as well as with my baby to come. Moreover, I also used to sing the names of Allah as a lullaby with my hands and my stomach as I could feel her in the last trimester and moving and all of that. And it was like the cutest thing. Aww. If you are confused about like how to go about with it, about how to sing the names of Allah, recite the names of Allah as a lullaby, then I have uh, left a link in the description box below of the melody that I used to recite the 99 names of Allah during pregnancy. Inshallah, I hope it helps you too. Part 3. After birth. My daughter has just turned two, and I have been using these steps with her since she was born. You could, however, start with the steps that you find applicable to your child from today itself and could also use it for kids over two years old if you consider that they would be useful. I hope they are. Step 1. Children are like sponges and they will pick up everything they hear or see. I therefore recommend that we play Islamic content like the Qur'an or the Nahas, etc. in the background of the television or on your mobile devices so that your child is able to hear it constantly. You could play the playlist that I have personally created with Islamic content for children as per the Shia Thanashiri School of Thought on this YouTube channel. It contains three versions of the Kalma and Nadali, Usul Adin, Furu Adin, Adhan, Aqam, and Sifati Sabutiya, Salbiya, and a lot of other stuff. And you could just select whatever is applicable to your child as per their age. For example, if your child has not started walking yet, you could play the Shia Kalma or Nadi Ali or Adhan Aqamat, which have like cartoon background behind the audios. And that would engage your child in uh, listening to the content as well as uh, paying attention to the video. Once they're older, or if your children are older, you could play content like the Shia Wudu song, or the Sifat Salbiya, Sabutia, Usul, or Furuuddin, etc. Or you could even play the Shia Panda animation cartoon. The link of the playlist is in the description box below. You're welcome. Step 2. Instill good manners in your child from the very beginning. Say salam to them every time they wake up, even if they don't understand it. 
They will quickly learn that it is the way of life and will start doing it themselves if they see you do it. Do it! Just do it! And it's just the cutest thing when they like, start saying salam to you in their baby stuttering way once they start speaking. Salam, mama. Salam, mama. So although easier said than done, the parents are the very first role models for the children, so your actions would clearly reflect in their behavior. Step three. I have personally like an early morning routine for my daughter, which I have been doing since she started walking. It starts with a Bismillah and Alhamdulillah video song, and then a five-minute exercise nursery rhyme by Coco Melon YouTube channel. The link of the playlist that I use every morning for her is in the description box below, and you could use it too. This short routine helps her get active every morning and has also helped her understand that we should begin the day with Allah's name and by thanking Him for everything. Duh. Step 4. Every time a mother feeds her baby, either herself or using a bottle, we should try to recite short surahs from the Qur'an that we want our children to memorize. So my daughter listens to me very intently every time I'm nursing her and I'm reciting the surahs like a lullaby for her. She quickly falls to sleep and you know the feeling you get when your child goes to bed. Yay! Okay, so step 5. Avoid letting your children watch meaningless cartoons or haram songs on the television as that would not only degrade their mental capacity, but would also take them away from Allah's blessings. The classical nursery rhymes are totally fine. I have posted a confirmation in the description box below of Imam Sistani's Imam Ali Foundation in London, confirming that nursery rhymes which cannot be played in entertainment gatherings, that is like, they're not considered ghina, are permissible for us to play for our children. Here are some of the educational cartoons that I prefer for my child in addition to the Islamic content playlist present on my channel. Coco Melon, Omar and Hannah, Blippi, Kidopedia, Stephen Maggie, Little Angel, Mr. Tumble, Teletubbies. I make sure that my daughter doesn't watch anything outside of these shows and also um, only for a limited period of time. In my experience, I realized that although there are so many cartoons that may appear innocent, they are very filthy in nature and a medium of the Dajjal to inculcate haram values in our children. For example, Peppa Pig, Booba, Morphal, Tutu Boy, Clay Mixer, Kids TV, and other cartoons that provide no educational value to the children. Ah, you extremist! Cartoons don't do any harm! This is from my personal experience, and only my opinion. If you want, just go ahead, make your children watch whatever, I don't care. <coughs> Step number six. Sit and read the Qur'an with your husband or family members every day for at least 10 minutes. Make sure your child is watching you. It would be great if you could give a little copy of the Qur'an to your child as well, but just make sure she doesn't disrespect it. The main idea is that she gets used to the idea of sitting together as a family with the Qur'an, and you know she understands the importance of reading the Qur'an daily. With consistency and patience on your part, your kid would eventually develop a habit of uh, sitting to read the Qur'an daily with you over time. Wow! Step number seven. Once they're able to walk, give your child a little musallah of their own and set it out on the ground every time you stand for prayers beside your prayer mat. Although they may not understand what you're saying at the moment, but they would at least learn the physical actions involved during prayers, which for this age is anyways a pretty big thing. Try to recite whatever is permissible in your prayers out loud so that the kids could listen and eventually memorize by listening. If your kids can speak, Teach them the tasbih of the Fatima the Zahra and then give them an option to either read the tasbih or stand for salat during prayer times with you. The sooner you instill these values in them, the better. Step number eight. Get a baby mic for them and encourage them to recite a religious kalam on the mic. You could also give them a like a little diary and could pretend it is their bayaz. This would develop an interest for azadari in them. If you yourself recite, then please keep your kids with you in gatherings so that they can learn from seeing you. This would also help them overcome stage fright. And finally, the bookish rules. Try to avoid arguments in front of your children with your spouse. Duh. Love your family members and respect them so that your children do the same with you. Duh. Become a child with your child as that would help them magnanimously in their psychological development. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and try never to scare or blackmail them as that would just result in a loss of trust and confidence on the baby's part from the parents. <coughs> Accept whatever they do within their capacity and love and respect them as much as you can. 
so that when they grow up, they are healthy individuals and they are ready to serve the Imam Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajak upon his reappearance. If you find my work useful, I request you to please pray for my parents and family and to also recite a Surah Fatiha for all the Marhumeen. Jazakallah khair.